Welcome to XR template tutorial number four. In this tutorial, we'll be going over the shadow tool and showing you how to apply different types of shadows to a quick shape. We'll also be showing you how to apply a certain blur to a shadow or also applying transparency to a quick shape. If you haven't already, go ahead and start a blank workspace document in XR Web Designer. And once you do that, let's go ahead and select one of the quick shapes and as you already know my favorite quick shape is the rectangle tool so I'm gonna select that you can select either one if you want of uh, the ellipse or the quick shape for a star so left click whichever quick shape that you prefer left click drag draw your square and once you draw your your quick shape you wanna go ahead and select the shadow tool and it's just this little you know kinda like a right angle looking uh, vector object here. You're going to left click that. That's your shadow tool. And once you do that, you'll see that up here at the top that your info bar changed. It now it's showing all the tools that are available for um, the shadow. And I'm going to demonstrate that it changes. I'm going to select the selection tool. You see that it changed the info bar. And then I'm going to select the shadow tool. And you'll see that up here it changes to show the options that you have. So once you have the shadow tool selected, you'll have a few different types of shadows here. You have the wall shadow, floor shadow, and glow shadow. And then you have the option to blur the shadow. And then you have the option to add a transparency. And we'll get into these later, the blur and the transparency. But the first one we're going to focus on is the wall shadow. And there's two ways in which you can initiate the wall shadow. You can either left click it here or by default when you click on a quick shape and left click and drag it'll automatically default to the wall shadow but if you uh, hit the un I want you to hit the undo key because I want to show you that you can also select it the regular way so go up to the top here click on this undo key this is going to undo an operation that you've done in the program so click that and it goes back to the previous state before where we were at so now that you went back one step you're going to go ahead and left click on the wall shadow and it applies a slight wall shadow even though you probably can barely see that it is there and you can left click and drag and adjust it however you'd like so if you wanted to move it to the right just move your shadow over to the right or you left, and you left click and drag to the left if you want it to the left top or bottom you know maybe on the edge or the top edge or top left edge top or bottom left edge wherever you'd like to place it you can place the shadow I want mine's probably uh, maybe about right there you put it wherever you like and once you do that uh, go ahead and go to your your next option in your types of shadows and I want you to select floor shadow so left click that in the info bar and you'll see that now it's changed to show the shadow as if the object is sitting on the ground so the square looks like it's sitting on the ground and the shadows casting backwards and you can move that shadow again to either side you can move it to the left to the right by left clicking and dragging or you can left click drag up you know basically just left click and drag it whichever direction you know very similar to some of the other things that we went went over in in uh, previous tutorials but yeah that's about all you have to do to control that let's go to the next uh, type of shadow and that, and that's actually actually I'm sorry it's not a shadow it's actually a glow so click on the glow and it, it can actually function as both a shadow and as a glow depending on how you use it and I can demonstrate that a little later but it's going to create a soft shadow around or a soft glow depending on how you use it around the the square and what you want to do is if you click left click you can drag outward you know from the center of the square drag outward and it'll make that shadow bigger and if you left click drag inward it'll make it smaller in some cases you can drag it to the point where you can't even really see it with your eye unless you're zoomed in really close on the object if you drag it out you'll see more of the shadow and if you drag in you'll see less when you have the glow tool selected 
but let me go ahead and show you how to make it look like it's really glowing because right now it doesn't appear like it's a glowing object and one of the reasons is because by default it it has the color gray as the the shadow so let's go ahead and drag the shadow out a little bit so it's easy to select it so left click drag out so it's really big and then double click in the shadow area with your, your left click mouse and then go down to the bottom to your color editor and left click on the icon and when it brings up your color editor um, I want you to go ahead and drag your cur your crosshair here in the bottom or wherever it's located and bring it towards the right to the red color or whatever color you want you can change it if you don't want red but I'm using red because it's such a strong color and it'll really demonstrate the power of the glow with that with the shadow tool and uh, next thing I want you to do once you change that color I want you to kinda drag this shadow towards the center make it a little smaller so left click drag inward towards the square and then we're gonna play around with the blur and the transparency I want you to go to the blur tool and I want you to increase it mm, maybe around 11 pixels or somewhere in that range doesn't have to be exact it could be a little bit less than 11 pixels or a little bit more and then you want to bring the transparency down and we're going to bring that down to maybe about a 40 40 something range somewhere in there and now you'll see that it really looks like this glow area around this square is really strong and the more you increase the blur you know the stronger the effect and the more you decrease the transparency the more powerful that glow looks it almost kind of looks like an eclipse you know if the moon was lining up with the sun you'd see like a glow around around the sun or I mean around the moon I'm sorry but yeah as you can see here it's got a very strong uh, glow effect by playing with the blur transparency and uh, let's go ahead and and redo this we're gonna we're gonna show you a little bit more of um, other ways that you could use this uh, blur and transparency so let's go ahead and I'm gonna actually use the undo key to do it this time but you can delete you can select and delete this if you want or but I'm gonna undo it just keep hitting undo until I get to a a regular uh, shadow so I, un I hit undo until we got back to this state and that's by hitting this key up here if you didn't do it in that order you know what just in case you didn't do a network I'm gonna go ahead and just delete it and redo the square so delete whatever you have on your pasteboard for the sake of easiness and redraw the square select your shadow tool and then I want you to go to um, the wall shadow and we're gonna left click and drag it wherever you want it on the screen and then go to the blur tool increase the blur and it kinda gives it a, a soft shadow behind the wall and you can decrease the transparency to make it seem like the objects really close or you can decrease it to make it seem like it's either really bright you know light by that object or that it's far away from the wall that's kind of what the idea of lighting the transparency up uh, you can make it darker like I said again to make it look like it's closer and you can adjust the shadow to make it look like it's literally sitting you know on your workspace let's go ahead and click on uh, the floor shadow and change it and it still has those same attributes that we just applied to the wall shadow so now the floor shadow looks like this object's really close to this shadow it looks more realistic and it kind of fades out as you get further away from the object looks like a real lighting effect very very effective and realistic and let's go back to the glow tool you know in this case it looks like it's glowing because of the different uh, attributes that we change such as the blur and the transparency so even though it's gray this time it looks still like it's glowing so that pretty much covers the shadow tool there's really not much more that you need to know uh, if I do feel there's something else I should share with you I'll do it in another tutorial but this pretty much covers the basics of using the shadow tool. 
I mean, there is one other thing you could do. Let's let's select the uh, wall shadow. And when you have the wall shadow selected, you have the X and Y positions of that up here, and so you can move it in increments, and you can increase, you know, the the X axis two pixels to the right. It moves in increments of two, or you can in decrease it two pixels to the left by selecting the left arrow. And the same thing with the Y axis. You can, you know, decrease it by two pixels going down or you can increase it by two pixels going up and that's the that's pretty much everything for the shadow tool there is anything else I can think of at the moment but like I said if there's anything else I will definitely make a new tutorial or if someone finds something additional that I didn't do in this tutorial just let me know send me a video I mean send me a, a message on YouTube and I'll I'll respond to your request so yeah that's everything this tutorial hopefully taught you how to successfully make a shadow on a quick shape and apply different types of shadows such as the wall shadow, the floor shadow, and the glow, and applying blur and transparencies to uh, quick shapes. Thank you for viewing my video and again make sure that you subscribe to our tutorials on YouTube and also if you would like to see any new templates or discounts on templates that we make for Xara Web Designer please visit our website at xrtemplate.com. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.